The Princess and the White Tiger. Chapter 1. A Father's Love. In the medieval African city of Zalanda, there lived a beloved king named Abdul. He ruled justly and cared deeply for his people, always striving to do what was best for them. However, Abdul was faced with a great challenge when his young daughter, Princess Fatima, fell gravely ill. The princess's condition worsened day by day, and no matter what the royal doctors tried, they could not find a cure. Desperate to save his daughter's life, Abdul summoned Commander Hassan, the greatest warrior in the kingdom, and asked for his help. Commander Hassan was a proud and fierce warrior, known for his bravery and his loyalty to the king. He vowed to do whatever it took to save the princess, and he set out on a journey to find a cure. He consulted with wise men and women, and he even traveled to distant lands in search of a solution. Despite his best efforts, Commander Hassan was unable to find a cure for the princess. Her condition continued to deteriorate, and Abdul knew that he had to do something drastic to save her. He called a council of his most trusted advisors and asked for their help. Chapter 2. The Herb in the Sacred Tree After much discussion and debate, the advisors came up with a plan. They had heard of a rare herb that was said to have the power to heal any ailment. The herb was located in a sacred tree, guarded by a fierce white tiger named Kajani. Determined to do whatever it took to save his daughter, Abdul ordered Commander Hassan to retrieve the herb from the tree. Commander Hassan was hesitant at first, knowing that the sacred tree was located deep in the forests on the outskirts of the kingdom. But he was loyal to the king and willing to risk his life for the princess. As Commander Hassan set out on his journey, he knew that it would not be easy. The forests were dense and treacherous, and he was not sure what dangers awaited him. But he was determined to succeed, no matter what the cost. Chapter 3. The Great White Tiger As Commander Hassan journeyed deeper into the forests, he began to sense that he was being watched. He couldn't see anyone or anything, but he could feel eyes upon him at all times. He knew that he was getting closer to the sacred tree and the fierce white tiger that guarded it. Finally, he arrived at the tree. Kajani was there, as he had expected, guarding it fiercely. She growled and snarled, determined to protect her territory and her cub. Commander Hassan tried to approach the tree, but Kajani would not let him pass. Kajani was fiercely protective of her territory and her cub, Asante. She had been the guardian of the sacred tree for many years, and she knew that the herb was the key to keeping the balance between the animals and the humans of Zalanda. She would not let Commander Hassan or anyone else take it without a fight. A confrontation ensued, with Kajani fiercely defending her territory and Commander Hassan trying to retrieve the herb. In the end, Kajani was killed but not before Commander Hassan was able to retrieve the herb. He brought it back to the king, who was overjoyed at the prospect of saving his daughter. Chapter 4. A Mighty Warrior is Born As Asante watched in horror as his mother was killed, he was filled with grief and anger. He vowed to seek revenge for her death and to protect the sacred tree at all costs. Asante knew that he needed to be strong and skilled in order to take on the powerful guards and their leader, Commander Hassan. Just as Asante was beginning to lose hope, a wise old wizard named Zoltar appeared before him. Zoltar had been watching the confrontation from afar, and he knew that Asante needed help. Without a word, Zoltar scooped up the cub and carried him away to safety. Asante was confused and hesitant at first but he eventually came to trust Zoltar. The old wizard took Asante under his wing and began to teach him everything he knew. Zoltar taught Asante about control, discipline, and the power of forgiveness. He showed Asante how to channel his anger and grief into becoming a powerful warrior. Over the years, Asante grew stronger and more skilled under Zoltar's guidance. He learned about strategy and tactics, and he practiced tirelessly with his weapons. Asante knew that he had to be ready for the day when he would finally face Commander Hassan in battle. Chapter 5. The Reign of Terror As Asante grew stronger, he began to set out on his own, 
seeking out opportunities to take on Commander Hassan and the guards. He knew that he needed to prove himself before he could take on the king, and he was determined to make his mark. Asante quickly gained a reputation as a fierce and relentless warrior. He terrorized the kingdom, attacking the guards and wreaking havoc wherever he went. The people of Zalanda lived in fear of the White Tiger, and they begged the king to do something to stop him. Commander Hassan, however, was not one to back down from a challenge. He vowed to capture Asante and bring him to justice, no matter what the cost. And so, a fierce face-off between Asante and the guards was inevitable. Chapter 6. The Final Confrontation The day of the final confrontation arrived, and Asante knew that this was his chance to prove himself. He faced off against Commander Hassan and the guards, determined to take them down once and for all. The battle was fierce and intense with Asante using all of his strength and skill to take on the guards. In the end, he emerged victorious, having injured Commander Hassan and chased off the rest of the guards. As Asante stood victorious, he was approached by Princess Fatima. She approached him cautiously, her eyes filled with tears. Please, Asante, she said, I know what happened to your mother was wrong. But you have to understand, I was sick and my father was desperate to save my life. He had no choice but to do what he did. Asante listened to the princess's words, and he began to see things in a different light. He realized that he had been consumed by his anger and his desire for revenge, and he had not stopped to consider the other side of the story. Chapter 7. The Princess and the Wise Tiger With the help of the princess, Asante learned to forgive the guards and the king. He realized that they had acted out of love and desperation, and he knew that he could not hold on to his anger any longer. As the years passed, Princess Fatima grew into a wise and fair queen, ruling justly over her people. And Asante remained by her side, serving as her most trusted advisor and friend. Together, they worked towards a brighter future for all, spreading their message of hope and understanding to all who would listen. Asante lived the rest of his days as a protector of the kingdom, using his skills and knowledge for good. And he knew that he had made a difference in the world, thanks to the lessons he had learned from his mother, Kajani, and the guidance of his mentor, Zoltar. The End